Today I'm going to show you how I run Starfield at 4K with a smooth average 60 plus frames per second everywhere in the game. I am Pixel Frank and welcome to the channel. So first I have a disclaimer I'm recording right now which means my real frame rate is usually about 5 frames higher than what you see right now. For hardware I'm using a 4060 Ti GPU, a Palette Storm X OC Mini on which I have a slight overclock. It's in a tiny 3 liter, low power economic ITX PC build, which will be part of an upcoming video, so if you want to stay tuned, you might want to subscribe to the channel. As for the overclock of the GPU, I have 100 MHz overclock on the core clock and another 1500 MHz on the memory clock. Now, mind you that this is working for me, I have tested it multiple times and it is working fine, but you might have to tweak your settings differently. As for the CPU, I'm using a 5700G AMD APU that is going to be powering our today's video and it is still part of the same small ITX build. As for the memory, I have a slight overclock from 3600 MHz to 3800 MHz with an F clock of 1900 MHz. Now this isn't a huge overclock so it will not impact performance or stability that much but it does help out. Now I don't really want to go into that many hardware details and for that reason let's just focus on the only single mod that you will need the DLSS and frame generation mod by Luke FZ, and I'm going to include the link in the description down below. This mod is also going to require the DLSS and DLSS frame generation DLLs to be installed in the folder specified by the mod itself. But this mod is going to help you increase frame rates for any NVIDIA GPU user that has a 20 series or later GPU. So that's everything from 20, 30 or 40 series GPU. With all that said, if you install the mod, we can shift focus to the game settings themselves. Now, before I just do that, I just want to show off a video that Gamer Nexus posted the other day. And this is a very detailed video on each of the game settings, on, on what uh, impacts visual fidelity and what exactly impa impacts uh, performance uh, as well. So if you want to check out this video, I'm going to link it in the description down below. Uh, this is a very cool video that I used to come up with the settings that fit my best uh, need and visual fidelity and uh, uh, all that fun stuff. So let's go uh, through the settings right away and I will give you a few details on what's what and why, why I set certain things in a certain way. So as for, as you can see, I'm running at 4K. I have my Dell monitor. I have dynamic resolution off. I don't need that. I have my rendering scale at 66%. I have the FSR2 upscaling, but the mod pretty much substitutes that with the DLSS 3.5 plus frame generation. So as for my settings using the video, uh, I put shadow quality on medium. It doesn't have that high of an impact. And uh, I mean, going below medium, it is going to look a bit weirder. But uh, indirect lighting, this is the summary of it. Indirect lighting impacts uh, visual fidelity at low settings, but everything above low is pretty much okay. So I put these two on medium. Reflections. There's not that much of a difference from low to ultra, so I put that on low. Particle quality, not that much of an impact. Uh, the video couldn't uh, show me any details. I couldn't see any difference in details in the game. Volumetric lighting is somewhat important. I let uh, I left that on, on medium. Crowd density is a critical aspect. So the lower you go, the less people you will see in cities, which can look a bit off. So I left this and on high. Motion blur, I don't like motion blur. This is off for me. Uh, GTAO quality, so this is the ambient occlusion and how certain shadows um, 
look like. So I let left this on high because it feels like it's very important on visual fidelity. Uh, the, the video explains that as well. I, I left this on high. Uh, grass quality. Um, if you visit planets with high uh, level of grass and 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 fauna, uh, uh, flora, uh, you might have an impact on visual fidelity on how certain things look. But for me, that's not a huge deal. And I'm also streaming and grass usually lowers uh, the stream quality. So I left this on medium. I want to have some grass, but not that much. Contact shadows, these are very unimportant. I could go as low as, as I mean, I could go as much as low. I left it, I left it on medium. Usually you don't see any change in detail because it's how objects contact on, on on ground so you don't really notice this type of shadow then v-sync it doesn't really impact anything because the mod i think turns off any type of uh, v-sync and uh yeah uh and i have enabled vrs which is it is called variable rate shading it is not explained that that well in the game but what this does is is usually it is focuses on detailed uh, areas of your frame and what it does is it improves like a certain text or certain textures that need to be detailed i'm going to show that off in the game so now uh we can we can finally uh i i would i would say we can finally walk around a few places i'm going to show you new atlantis this is going to be the place which which will have the worst FPS you'll see in the game. After which I'll walk around on Crete um, on, on one of the starting planets to show how the outdoors FPS is affected. And finally, some indoors activity like a mine, cave, uh, the inside of an outpost uh, to, show, uh, to show you what the FPS would uh, look like. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. So New Atlantis will have the lowest of the, the FPS values you will see in the game. Uh, but overall, it is going to be a smooth ride as long as you have uh, free sync or G-Sync. Um, as you can see, 58. This I, I literally spawned in at the mast area. Uh, this is going to be the lowest FPS you will see all around all around uh, new atlantis this is the heaviest place i found or, or the the most the fullest with objects with people crowded uh that's pretty much it some some areas are going to be somewhere in the mid 15 50 range but other than that all all the rest of the new atlantis is going to look pretty smooth and clean so let's go to the spaceport area okay that guy just uh bugged out <laughs> and that can happen regardless regardless of what settings you use <laughs> yeah let's load into uh the spaceport area smooth this has improved fps now it's much better. And as you can see, this is pretty much an average of 60 FPS all around smooth gameplay. This is a 4060 Ti with a slight overclock, but it's not it's not the GPU that's doing the work. It's more rather uh, it's rather the DLSS and the frame generation that is uh, doing the work. And if you if you wonder, does the frame generation impact does the frame generation impact the um, the input lag um it doesn't really so i am i am moving from left to right i am uh pretty much just clicking and it's responsive it doesn't have to do anything with the with the input lag it is a really good uh it it is it is working really well so, as you can see, that's New Atlantis for you, and I think we should maybe load onto Crete. 
Oh man, Vectera. Holy moly, I don't have a... Yeah, let's go. Let's go to the well. First, because that's pretty close. <clears throat> so the well is going to be one of the more crowded indoors area. So... And I mean, oh yeah, this was this was a quest I saved before. No worries. So as you can see, this is very smooth. 70 plus FPS. It just works. And note that all any FPS you'll see, please add plus five to it. For me, when I uh, when I when I'm in the mast area. I'm somewhere around 58, 59, uh, 60 FPS, the lowest. And right now, the only reason why my FPS is lower is just because I'm uh, I'm recording. So it's around 5 FPS that the recording is taking up. Just so that you know. So yeah, um, very smooth. I can do whatever I want. I can just go around. That Smooth way, gameplay, yeah. 4K, with around medium-high settings, high visual fidelity. I think I think this is just working, working pretty well. Now I think I'm going to have to restart the game to be able to load in some other, I mean to load onto Crete. So uh, yeah, and that will be pretty much the outdoors area. The FPS for uh, the FPS range for the outdoors outdoors area, and uh, yeah, as you can see, I mean a plus five FPS. It's around it's around 70, 70 FPS mark, uh, mid sixties to upper sixties to lower seventies, which I think for, I mean four K, all right. 4K 4060 Ti with medium to high settings. I think this is this is just great. So that's pretty much it. I mean of course right now I can, I can't show you combat but usually combat doesn't interfere with with the FPS. I tested it uh, uh, playing uh, playing on my own a bit. So yeah, this is pretty much planet side, and as you can see, the, the visual fidelity is very high. Uh, the settings that we tuned down from high or ultra uh, aren't uh, that impactful. Everything's looking great, and uh, hey, that's kind of it for today's video. So uh, as uh, as a final thoughts. Uh, it's a bummer that AMD users don't uh, don't have access to similar options, but if you have a 30 or 40 series NVIDIA GPU, you can you can too uh, get similar, if not better, frame rates. I mean, this is a 4060 Ti, mind you. I mean, if you have a 4070 or anything on on the higher range, like a 3070 or 3080 or 3090. Uh, you will have much better frame rates than I do at 4K. So, yeah. And this is the 8 gig version of the 4060 Ti. It's a mini. A 40 Ti 60... Uh, 4060... <laughs> a 4060 Ti mini doing this job at 8 gigs. I mean, yeah. So, with all that said, thank you for uh, tuning in. Thank you for watching the video if you liked it. And if you want to stay tuned on the upcoming... Uh, ITX build, uh, 3 liter, very small, very small 3 liter, low power, economic ITX PC build that I uh, put together and that I'm using right now to play. Uh, yeah, that that is an upcoming video. It is going to uh, be coming soon. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. See you next time.